happening this morning, folks. Time check, just coming up to half past eight. But before we go to the newsroom, here's movie. I've broken your egg again. Cards and coppers for you, my girl. sauce. No matter. Oh, Eddie, I am sorry. I get enough sauce from you and the kids. It was on my list. I put it on my list. I know I did. Mrs Meadows, I love you. Nearly 22. Ow! Come on, you lot. School! Bye. Bye. Yeah, yes, yeah, right. Should I have made an appointment? Did you want to talk to me then? Well, if it's convenient. Oh, you, well, you better come in. Come in, sit yourself down. <sighs> Mrs. Um... Meadows, Julia Meadows. When you're ready then, Mrs. Meadows? Well, the thing is, I've got someone minding the shop. Have you? I said I'd only be ten minutes. You know what it's like, first thing in the morning. <laughs> yeah, vaguely. And I wondered if you could pop round. To the shop? Uh, I close between two and three. This afternoon? Well, every afternoon, except Wednesdays, No, I mean, you want me to come round and see you this afternoon at about two o'clock? Only he goes away tomorrow, you see. Who's he? My husband. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, can you? Two o'clock. Oh, well, that's it then. Well, it's a beginning anyway. Yes, I've done it. I've actually started the ball rolling. Oh, did you, Mrs. Uh, Meadows, just one thing. Where is the shop? Is that Mrs. Meadows? Yes. Wife of the famous Edward Meadows? Oh, Eddie, you are a fool. 
But this is your secret admirer, Cary Grant. You might remember me. I came in the shop the other day for a bar of fruit and nuts. Well, why I phoned Mrs. Meadows is because I was driving along just now and I thought to myself, I wonder if she knows just how happy she makes me. You are a fool, Eddie. That's all I wanted to say, Mrs. M. I'm a very happy man. Now you can go back to work. See you later, then. I'll see you later. Another woman? They can usually tell. A lot of it goes on then. Enough. He's a good man, a, a good father and a good husband. Do you think he's, um... I just want to be sure. Have you said anything to him? No. He took this suit in for cleaning and asked me to pick it up. Forgot to give me the ticket. I thought it might be in one of his other jackets. And there was this photo, a girl. Written on the back, it said, Love you, Jenny. She was young, slim, lovely. I can understand it in a way. Yes, well, a photograph could mean anything. Could mean nothing. Well, it's not just that. I mean, just lately he's been different. As though he's not here, as though there's something on his mind. He's such an open man. He's so, well, just open and daft in a way. I mean, the things he does, like this morning, phoning me up just to tell me how happy he was. Things like that. Daft. Yeah, lots of women would like a husband as daft as that. He's always been the same. He makes me feel as though, as though I'm doing him a great big favour just by being here. Been married long? Nine years this Christmas. How many children? Two, a girl and a boy. Oh, nice. They're lovely. Eddie idolises them. Spoils them, really. I suppose it's him being away such a lot. I goes away, is he? He's work. Oh. He goes all over the country. They pull down these old houses and Eddie buys up the bits and pieces, doors and fireplaces, things like that. He calls himself a high-class totter. <sighs> well, there's a bob or two in it, I should think. Oh, I don't know what he makes. He gives me so much every week. And if I want any more, I just have to ask. Then there's the shop, of course. Oh, in your name, is it? Mm. He bought me the lease soon after we were married. <laughs> he said it would keep me out of mischief. Yeah, I would have thought a couple of kids would have done that. Well, we always had help. And now they're both at school, it's a lot easier. He wanted me to be independent, you see. He's a bit older than I am, and he thought that, well, if anything should, you know, happen, I'd be able to stand on my own two feet. Mm. How often does he go away? Every Tuesday. And comes back when? Every Sunday. Ever since you've been married? Ever since. Yeah, well, some women would say that wasn't much of a married life. Some women. Mrs Meadows, a man away from home a lot. It's quite on the cards. I know he... that. Why don't you put it to him? Ask him direct. No. But if he's as open as you say he is. No. Suppose there is a woman. Suppose I find her, prove something. What will you do? I don't know. Well, you employ me, it'll cost you six guineas a day, plus. So you ought to make up your mind while you're spending it. Well, I just want to know, to be sure. I just want to think that if anything does happen, I'll be ready. And perhaps because I'm ready, not do anything stupid. I'm a woman, Mr Marker. I feel there's something and I've got to know. Uh, this woman, this girl, could be local, of course. Oh, no, he wouldn't do that. Mrs. Meadows, you anyway, have no Anyway, there idea. was a sticker on the back of the photograph, the photographer's address. I only remember the name of the town, Northampton. It's one of the places he goes to. And he goes away tomorrow? Every Tuesday. Well, I could strike lucky straight off. Better call it two days, just to be on the safe side, but longer if I come up with nothing and you still want me to go on. Now, at six guineas a day, that could work out... That's all right. As long as you know. Would you like some sweets? Thanks, yeah. Oh, um, any particular sort? Something minty.
there. I'm not trying to bribe you. I <laughs> would take more than a bag of sweets. <laughs> well, perhaps not. Thanks. That's the funny thing I can never understand about Eddie. What's that? Well, every time he goes away, he takes a pile of chocolate with him. A sweet tooth, is he? Well, that's just it. He never touches the stuff when he's at home. Chocolate, toffees, none of it. Yeah, I wonder why. He says it's compensation. What for? For me. So Mrs Meadows? Are you quite sure? Yes, Mr Marker, quite sure. All right for tomorrow. That's a bit tight. No, how tight? How long? Oh, a couple of days. Maybe not even that. There's a choice of two. That one will do. Rover 2000 automatic. A bit pricey. Or a dormobile? Dormobile? Dormobile. Well, you mean a... Well, it's a very handy vehicle. Yeah, I've got a furniture remover. So, move some furniture. Hello. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's a bit tighter. Uh, hang on a moment. Usual discount? Usual. All I can do tomorrow is a Rover 2000. Automatic. I'm coming to the conclusion that I'm a bit of a fraud. <laughs> Who isn't? Ah, yeah, but I earn my living at it. Oh. How? Then I'll tell you. A solicitor hands me a piece of paper. Mr. X is being naughty, and Mrs. X wants to prove it. Sure enough, there he is, up to his eyeballs in infidelity. I do my stuff, take my money, and think no more about it. But let Mrs. X contact me direct. Let Mrs. X become more than a name on a piece of paper. Let her show me photographs of the kids, and suddenly I can't take it. Life is ugly. Please. Point is, I get these twinges of conscience from time to time, but I don't know whether I really feel anything or whether I just feel I ought to. Oh, don't mind me. Cheers. Yeah, hey. Well, to make you happy, I now have a traffic report. Well, you can't win them all. Oh, lovely grub. Mm, I put two of those new bars in. He said they're very popular up north. When I was a kid, you went into a shop, you knew exactly what you wanted, and you got it. Nowadays, there's so much to choose from, you could spend all day. Mm, it's the same with everything. Give me the days of broken biscuits and bacon off the bone. That's before your time. <laughs> I remember. Well, that coat should be ready. Mm? Oh, yes. I noticed they got some nice kiddie stuff. The children are all right, Eddie. Some nice suede coats, I noticed. You can't keep buying us clothes, Eddie. Why not? Because, I don't know, just because. The day I can't buy things for you and the kids is the day I break my heart. What can you say to the man? Nothing. Giz giz. Bye. God, you're a good-looking woman. You've cut yourself again. Oh, I? Mm. Mm. If I wasn't a working man, Mrs M, you'd be in terrible trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, let me help you. I'm a bit short this week. How much? Fifteen. Fifteen enough? Oh, ample. Yeah, sure. Mm, positive. You never ask. Hmm? When you give me extra, you never ask why. Well, you need it. That's good enough. If only you'd ask just once, just sometime. <laughs> oh, Eddie, I'm sorry. I'm just being silly. <laughs> it must be the change of life. You sure there isn't something oh, you... Oh, no, Eddie, I'm just being silly. 
See you Sunday, then. See you Sunday. <laughs> Give me a ring tonight, eh? About nine. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Make a reverse charge call for Windsor, please. Windsor 67810. My name is Meadows and this is 0604-8269.
Mrs. Meadows? The Mrs. Meadows? This is your traveling man checking in just to say how much he loves you. It's late and I haven't booked. I'm sorry. Oh, you're not a bit sorry. Oh, I am? Where? Just for tonight? Mm, well, I'm not sure. Mm. Room four, second landing. Mr. Marker. Mm. Did someone recommend us? Mm, chap in Birmingham. Oh, Chris Harrington. No, no, not Harrington. Uh, can't remember his name. It began with a B, I think. Or did it? Anyway, he said he was in machine tools. Oh, it's not important. Do I sign the register? Oh, if you feel the urge. Do you insist? On very little. Though I would ask you to take your boots off before getting into bed. Oh, you that, I promise. <laughs> Second floor, you said? Yes. Any... Have you eaten? Yes. Oh, anything to drink? No, 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 no. No, just a good night's sleep, that's all. Any particular time in the morning? We're not so early. Eight o'clock with tea? Perfect. Right. The breakfast is in there, and... All right. Uh, Ten o'clock is the absolute limit. Ah, uh, that's what they all say. <laughs> Mostly travellers, I suppose. Mostly, yes. Good night. Good night. Best breakfast I've had for years. Good. My compliments to the chef. Oh, compliments. Gratefully received. Oh, do you? <laughs> bacon and eggs aren't that difficult. Yeah, but there are bacon and eggs and bacon and eggs. <laughs> Staff must be a bit of a problem these days. I don't keep any. You do it all yourself? I'm one of those irritating people who organises things. Mm, I can see that. Flattery or insult? A simple observation. Delicious <laughs> mm -hmm. so honey. Yes, it's from the hives. You keep bees? <laughs> and I grow the vegetables and the fruit. But all yourself? It's terrible for the male ego, isn't it? Well, what do you do in your spare time? Build tractors? <laughs> I paint. I also make these. I might even try and sell you some. You know something? You might even succeed. I'm up, then. Oh. What time tonight? Well, I'm not sure. I'm going to the Stevens place. Well, the tie isn't straight. Can Get you... away. Yeah, there. Got your present. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> I forgot to give it to you last night. I had something on my mind. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. Terrible sweet tooth. Oh, yes. Yeah. Off. Started when she was carrying. Oh, I hate that expression. A pregnant, a pregnant. Not the first, the second. Edward, she says, Edward, I fancy something sweet. You've got me? I says, chocolate, she says. You know what? Now she can hear a rapper coming off at 300 yards. Go <laughs> earn some money. Go on. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> Quite a character. Oh, Eddie? Oh, yes, he never changes. <laughs> I think he's really the only innocent human being I've ever met. Is he? Mm, guileless, completely lacking any form of form of guilt. Like a child, really. It's probably probably why I married him. 
At least it's the only reason I can think of. Uh, but I don't know your name, Mrs. Um... Meadows. Adele Meadows. Mrs. Meadows, uh, I think it's a bit more complicated than we thought. Have you found anything yet? Oh, no, no, not yet. Only I've been thinking. She might be one of his clients, mightn't she? I mean, he meets a lot of women in his work. He's, he's bound to, really, and it might be one of his clients, mightn't it? I mean, it might be nothing at all. You know, the sort of silly things people write on the back of photos, especially women. I mean, it might be nothing at all. You, you're most probably right, Mrs. Meadows. What did you mean when you said more complicated? Well, it's just that he moves around a lot. His business, you know, he's a difficult man to keep tabs on. That's all I meant. Might take just a bit longer than we thought at first. That is, if you still want me to go on. Well, yesterday I... No. No, I must know one way or the other. Right. Well, I'll be in touch then. Yes. No, or Mrs. Meadows. Don't worry. Well, there's no point in... Oh, thank you, Mr. Parker. I've been admiring your garden. Mmm, it's a lovely day. Mm. Morning off. Mmm. Cancelled meeting. Room to lunch. Please. I still don't see how you do it. What, this? Oh, this. Owning a guest house, looking after a family. Oh, my family looks after itself. What, even the children? Oh, my daughter's old enough to have a life of her own, and my son is in boarding school most of the year. So, no problems. Yes, but from what you said about your husband... Ah, oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Yes, there is something wrong with that pot. But I can't think what it is. Yes, now, Eddie does need looking after, but even that's been organised. His work takes him away most of the week. Oh, has he always had to go away? Yes, ever since I've known him. You don't mind that? Mind? <laughs> He'd drive me crazy if he was here all the time. No, it suits me very well. Perhaps not some, but it suits me. Yeah, I'm not married, you see. I can never bring myself to ask a woman to put up with my kind of life. Uh, moving about all the time, never at home. Oh, if she loved you, she'd put up with it. Yes, is that, I suppose? <laughs> yes, indeed, Mr. Marker. <laughs> There's that. You've been running this place long? Oh, after the children went to school, what, uh, 11 years ago, Eddie suddenly found himself with a bit of extra money, so he bought this place for me. To keep you out of mischief? <laughs> His very words. Give you some sort of independence in case anything happened to him? You've been talking to him. But just guessing. The male mind. So you must have seen quite a few changes. Hmm? Right here, Northampton. Oh, well, everywhere changes. Why? I'm just interested. Oh, <laughs> bored. For me? You, kicking your heels. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be. I see it all the time. Ah, uh, travellers. Mm, my bread and butter. What did you do before this? Oh, I ran a, a tea shop in um, Woburn Lane. Very oldy worldy. <laughs> My God, it must have been awful. <laughs> well, have you forgotten? Almost. I couldn't quite. That's where I met Eddie. Ah. Mm. He broke a milk jug. <laughs> and I'd had such an awful day that I burst into tears. <laughs> and then in the evening, there he was, with a bunch of sweet peas. <laughs> he took me to the pictures. <laughs> Greer Garson. I remember I cried again. <laughs> Poor Eddie. He must have been soaking wet. <laughs> How long before you married? Mm, two months. Locally? Mm, in the town hall. A beautiful day in August. Tuesday. And then, on Friday, he was off again. My parents thought I'd gone mad. What, marrying a part-time husband? <laughs> marrying a man 12 years older than myself. Good God, Adele, my father used to say. What do you know about the man? Two months. Huh. Not enough. Not enough. Was it? Forty-seven, August, August, August. Don't get people checking the marriage register. No. No, are perfectly entitled to, of course. <laughs> Just don't seem to get much call for it. No. No. Uh, 
Uh, not the police, is it? No, I would have said. Detective. No? Private detective. Do I look like a private detective? Well, I had this girlfriend once. Well, um, not really a girlfriend. An acquaintance. Well, she had this uncle who was a private detective. Well, well, not really a detective. Well, he was really. Yes, a store detective, you know, in a big store. You got a pencil? Huh? Thanks. August 23rd, 1949. Now we know. What? They were married. Who? My parents. Oh. That'll stop the rumours. You mean... Oh, yes. Have a bullseye. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Coffee? No, not tonight, love. No, I've got a busy day tomorrow. Busier still this time next week. Oh, I never thought you'd be nervous. Neither did I. I get butterflies every time I think about it myself. It's the first time for both of us. Give your mother a ring. She'll put you straight. I'm going over tomorrow. Oh, that's good. I've been so busy this week, really. What with me, keeping it to myself. Oh, they understand. Making the most of it. Dear old mum. She never fusses or interferes. She's always there if I need her. Oh, it's sad, really, our families drift apart. Well, nobody's drifting apart. The chicks are leaving the nest, which is what life is all about. Oh, I should know the amount of fluttering about I've done. Oh, you. Me. You're hopeless, you are. <laughs> Come here. You are going to look very beautiful at that church next week. Registry office. Well, it's the same difference. Mm. <clears throat> oh, I love you. <laughs> Something to read. Can't sleep. Yeah, don't know why. I think she keeps a few magazines under here. Looking after you, is she? Mm, couldn't be better. First time here? Yes, first time. One in a million, my wife. I can believe that. There you are. Try thumbing through that lot. You'll find mm. everything there from pottery to pig breeding, and she knows a bit about all of them. <laughs> Thanks. What line are you in? Furniture. Oh, similar game as so. Yes, she said. Your wife. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, me for bed. Off again tomorrow. Excuse me. Oh, I thought your wife said you were here till Sunday. No, no, Thursday. Oh, must have misunderstood. Every Thursday. Back Tuesday. Yeah, I'm off myself tomorrow. Oh, yes. Hmm. Up north. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What about you? Cheltenham. Well, good night. Good night.
No, it's all right, thanks. I'm just... Uh... Yes, of course. <laughs> Is this honey? Oh, it's not for sale. It must have been left there by mistake. Oh. Oh, well, they'll come back for it, I dare say. Oh, no, no. It belongs to Mrs. Meadows. She loves her honey. The Mrs. Meadows? The owner. Oh, was that her I just saw leaving? That's right. Her husband was just taking her out to lunch. Oh, that was her husband, was it? Mm. The bringer of the honey. No, Teddy. Constance? I've had quite sufficient. Just a drop. Help me finish the bottle. No, Teddy. here. Same table, same food, same wine for the past, oh, God knows how many years. We're part of the furniture. The Thursday furniture. <laughs> Nothing changes, always the same. You with your one glass of wine and no more. You with your dreadful steak and kidney pudding. That's it. That's exactly it, Constance. It is as if we have made time stand still. <laughs> We're getting old, Teddy. There's plenty of time yet. I've never made demands on you. Perhaps if there'd been children... What I dread more than anything is Stop that I it, should Connie. ever... I'm older than you are, Teddy. These things have got Please. to be chalked. Talk... It's my fault. I, I can't drink. Half as much as I think I can, that's my trouble. How many times do I tell you? Yes, you're right, as always. Change the subject, eh? Mm. Uh, is that coat ready yet? Came in yesterday. Oh, lovely. And I spoke to my other friend about those kiddies' coats. He's rather keen on the sheepskin. Have you got the measurements? Mm, they're all written down. Teddy, you are selling these coats. Of course I am. Yes. Only I know you, far too soft. You charge me trade, I charge them trade. I do them a favour, they do me a favour. When did you ever ask anyone for a favour? You'd be surprised, Mrs M. Now listen, it's half past two. Now I did not buy you the lease of that classy establishment just so that you could sit there getting drunk, shouting abuse at an elderly, a uh, uh, very, very elderly... Uh, <laughs> Wait, huh? <laughs> Six seven eight one zero. This is the sort of thing he's after. I'll have to order it. Oh, it's all right. There's no rush. Oh, very nice. Very nice indeed. Are you going to take it now? Why not? Right, leave it on the rack, Julian. Yes, Mrs. Meadows. Knowing you, you'll probably lose it. You can take it just before you go back on Sunday. What's the damage? Oh, we'll settle up later. Oh, no, you know me, Mrs. M. I like to keep things neat and tidy. Now, how much? What's this then? You're following me? 
That's right, Mr. Meadows. From Windsor to Northampton to Cheltenham. Or, oh, putting it another way, from wife to wife to wife. Thanks. What do you do at Christmas? Christmas? You've got three families. How the hell do you manage Christmas? Oh, well. Christmas Day with the youngest children, Christmas Eve with Adele, and Boxing Day with Connie. And they accept that? Yes. Never ask questions? No. Then why not? Because they know that when I go away, it's because I've got to. You must have a mind like a filing cabinet and computer. Yes, I suppose I must. You never made a mistake. I don't know, probably. Well, I mean, if I hadn't, you wouldn't. Yes, yes, all right, all right. You really take the biscuit, you know that? I mean, you really take the biscuit. Did I tell you something? I feel guilty. Me. Just knowing. I'll say something, for God's sake. Well, I used to have this dream. I dreamt I had an accident, a bad accident. I'm lying in hospital and the doctor says, not to worry, old chap, we've informed your next of kin. Visiting day, the doors open and there they are, all of them. Flowers and chocolates advancing towards the bed, looking at each other, all wondering. And waiting for me to supply the answer. Funny in a way. Oh, scream. The thing is that over the years, it's changed. The dream. I'm no longer ill. I'm dead. I just don't understand. How the hell do you cope? Cope? What with the practical details? Three wives, three families. How the hell do you cope? I cope because of them, because they accept me for what I am. Oh, you're kidding. It's true. For what they think you are. No, for what they know. Do you really believe that, don't you? Yes. You're a bigamist, a criminal. No, not a criminal. You've got three wives. And I love them, and my children, and they love me. But that's no justification. Well, to me, it justifies everything. Oh, uh, don't patronise me, for God's sake. No, no, no. I mean, I don't understand myself. It just happened. There was nothing planned. I sort of drifted into it. I suppose in an odd sort of way, I, I thought I was making honest women of them. But you did a damn good job. And I loved them. They all give me something. I suppose in a way, I'm, I'm like a big kid. Someone gives, and I take. I'd write that down, if I were you, before you forget it. Use it in court. You're bound to get off. You're going... Well, you've got to. What I've got to do is to report back to your wife. Sorry. The Windsor edition. After all, she's the one that started getting suspicious about your girlfriend. Girlfriend? What girlfriend? Oh, come on. Well, no, I mean, I thought you found out about one of the others. Oh, no, that pleasure's to come. Then I don't understand. Your computer developed a fork. She found a photograph in your pocket. Love you, Jenny. Jenny? Yeah. Number four on the list, or just a passing fancy? Jenny's my daughter. Bye, Adele. She's getting married. Yes, one of my children is getting married, and it's 
suddenly there's a whole new generation of lying round the corner. And Connie, suddenly I'm aware that she's getting old. She's going to need me. Oh, it's a pity you didn't think of that, what, 30 years ago? Oh, yes, I know. I mean, there's no excuse. No excuse. Sooner or later, the whole thing is going to come crashing down. In fact, it's... Oh, it started already. If only there was a way that Oh, I... don't come home with a self-pity, for God's sake, you won't wash. I thought I'd stopped being surprised. But you, ladling out love like a soup kitchen. But no matter what you say, it's for you, not them, I tell you. Well, I don't care about you. I've got to go back and face that woman. I've got to look her in the eye and maybe tell her that her two children are bastards. And that turns my stomach over. You said, uh, maybe, tell her. I've got an alternative. Easier for her, easier for me. But the rest of the mess, you clear up yourself. Ah, part of the game. Well, I found the girl, one in the photograph. Oh. And she's his daughter. Yeah. He'd been married before. Well, he didn't want to tell you because, well, I don't know. I suppose he thought it might upset you, you not being his first wife. His daughter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you asked me to check up on the girl in the photograph, I have. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> He could have told me. Daft Apeth, he could have told me. Are you going to tell him? Did I know? Mm. Well, yes, why? Oh, I... I wouldn't say anything about it if I were you. But he's chosen not to tell you. But now you know. You tell him how you know and... It won't be easy. Well, I'd try if I were you, Mrs Meadows. I really would try. If there's any explaining to do... Let him do it. I want to make a reverse charge call to Northampton. Reverse charge call to Chapman, please. Oh, 